Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, I'm Father Mark Murray. Hey, everybody. I'm Father Innocent. Father Angelus here. And Father PT. And this is the Poco a Poco podcast. We're the, Fran- 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 <laughs> We're the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. <laughs> Are you nervous? Am I nervous? A little bit nervous. We got cameras. Hey, cameras. Hi, everybody. What's going on? Um, so it's it's feel like it's been a minute. A hot and minute. A hot minute. Uh, ha- happy Easter. Blessed Easter. Yeah, come on, we right? Are. Easter week. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to sing a song, Father PT? No. <laughs> Father PT actually has a good voice. We would appreciate you singing some more on the podcast. Eventually, but not now. I'm not just, hey, do this and do it now, you know? Could you just... Uh, what was the song? Can you sing? Uh, what was the song you got in trouble for with the MC? I swear, all for one. <laughs> Just a little verse. <laughs> I did it last week or whenever we did the podcast. That would be funny. That would be funny. So here's what, what let's let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, thanks, Spirit Juice. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Thanks for the mug, Spirit Juice. Right here. Mm. <laughs> Everybody thanks for it. the camera, Spirit Juice. <laughs> thanks for everything. <laughs> thanks for nothing, Rob. Um, and by nothing, we mean everything. But... Um, if you want to continue to support the podcast, which would be grateful. Pretty awesome. You can go to spiritjuice.org backslash poco poco. Looking for those monthly <laughs> monthly benefactors. Help this thing happen. What are you laughing about, Father PT? You just open your Bible and you have the baptismal promises in there. Yeah. Do you reject Satan? I do. I hope you do. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a very intense thing to look at as you're, you're talking about other things. I gave a talk for Varsity Catholic. Mm-hmm. What's up, Varsity Catholic? Molly Bent, you guys know Molly Bent? Molly Bent played at UConn women's basketball. She's the one who I talked to about whether or not the Friar team, best Friar team, could compete with UConn women's team. And that what seems to be an ongoing conversation. Still, still it's debatable. been like five or six years. Still very debatable. Is this going to happen ever? Would this happen? It, it, it sounded like she was like, you want to get into practice? And then we could see what happens from there. But I was like, nah. Paige Buchler, though. Is she Buchler, is that how you say her name? I don't know. Anyway. She's nice. Yeah, she's real. But you're you're talking. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Why'd you have to interrupt me, Father PT? <laughs> I just want you to know I'm really grateful that you're here. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Um, okay, what else? So this is, do you want to say, I'm going to say one happy birthday. Do it. You just had your birthday. And if your name is Mary McDonough, happy day after your birthday, Mary. Her birthday is April 6th. Is, which, there, is there anybody else's birthday, April 6th? My birthday is not April 6th. Your birthday is April 6th. Here we are. Happy birthday, Katie. Big three, six. <laughs> mm-hmm. April 1st. Anybody's birthday April 1st? My, my birthday was April 1st. Holy Thanks, you Thanks look, to you guys for the presents. You make 36 <laughs> look so good. <laughs> Ange, you look amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just, Thanks for your good trim my hair. <laughs> yep. We were, we were talking about how you're going to, Father Innocent's grays are kicking oh, your grays out. Of now the, we have cameras. People can see these things, you know? Yeah. I'm doing pretty good so far. Yeah, but it's probably tell me, not. Tell me about probably that. not long. I no. just started. I just took responsibility. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Yes. I'll what beard tea. product do you use? To whoa, get your whoa, whoa! Is that is that Nothing what's going on there. here? I live stress free. <laughs> hey, listen. I was uh, recently in Chicago um, out of Briar Brother Elijah's family's house. Mm-hmm. It was amazing, and um, his mom is a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. We love we love Jeannie, and uh, she's like, "Do you want me to like?" I noticed some grays. Well, you want me to like dye your beard? I'm like, Jeannie. Take it back. Like she, she was like, she was like, this would be good. I can dye it. And I'm like, can you imagine me getting back with like this, this dark dyed beard? I could actually. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be rocking awesome. it. There will probably be a point where people <clears throat> no longer believe that you guys are twins because you look so much older than Father <laughs> Angela. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your father? <laughs> I think we've reached the threshold of making fun of each other. Thank you, Father <laughs> Mary. <Mike. laughs> uh, so here's what we're. This is like the. Um, that was just really funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which one about them? Not yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't tell who's who. Yeah. Did old. You, old you're old laughing at my joke. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Actually, Father Peter. You're not really that funny, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mean that we're trying to cut out, Father <laughs> Innocent. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. I'm focused. Let's do it. I'm glad I can make you laugh once. And we still don't know why fa- pe- people really like Father PT. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. <laughs> I thought we're being nice. <laughs> you can't help it. Somebody said you sound like The Rock. I feel like him too. Actually, like anyway, anyway, let's just let's just move forward here. <laughs> and you go we're off focused. Tangent, that's not helpful. So let's go. We can talk about the fact that I'm sitting on books to be. <laughs> How many? You guys said just two books and a blanket. 
to be able to fit your guys's You're height. just a little guy. Kind of raising you up. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Gap. That oh, would be my man. wrestling nickname. Um, oh my God. Wow. Baby Gap. It's funny. So <laughs> I'm not laughing at that one. It's so kind of so Baby Gap wrote a book. Oh, yeah, man. Here we are. Can we hold it up? Can we hold, hold it up? One of those things? So Habits for Holiness, it's the name of the book. See Father Mark Mayer on the back. Got to my face on the back. Right this there. is like a thing, front and back. What got photoshopped out of Annie Thebe. Thanks for the picture on the back. Look forward to being at your wedding very soon. Um, she took that picture and it was maybe like hours after I'd ran into a tree. Ooh. There was so like what's, a, there was what's like photoshopped a, out? The your huge face. scrape across my face. <laughs> It was right when it, it was like the first time I met the Benzingers. So I'm like visiting this family and it's like, oh, by the way, I just walked into a tree. It's pretty good. I won't tell this story, but do you remember another time we were there together and I pushed you into a tree? <laughs> <laughs> I've run into, um, what's a, what's the generic word for trees or bushes? Brush? Generic Brush. Word. Um, Sorry. I wish Father Gregory Pine with the Dominicans was here. <laughs> you know, Foliage? Foliage. What's foliage? Um, generic yeah. <laughs> term for trees. Pass the test. We're not that smart. Um, <laughs> so this is what we're doing is this is like the, the book <clears throat> Habits for Holiness. In many ways, it is focusing on our response to the Lord. But I wanted to, before getting into that, I think it's important to like, is as we've talked about before, and we want to revisit again and again and again, is that we want to look at Christianity as a response relationship. Right, we it 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 doesn't begin with us. It begins with the Lord and His love for us and His mm. seeking of us, and it's our response. And so the grace to respond and the and the why and the how and the power and all of that stuff. It's it's a grace given by the Lord. Mm. Um, and and so just to begin there, because I do think we can get in trouble if we focus too much on like our part in it, and we lose sight of of who we're following after. Mm. Yeah, our boy Levi Maricakis. Um, has this great line as he, in, in his commentary on Matthew, Ma- Matthew, St. Matthew likes to say in his gospel that the Lord is kind of always on his way. Mm-hmm. He's like moving through. Um, there's just a lot of like momentum that Jesus has as he's moving through the gospel. And it's also, it's actually like a physical thing. Also, it says like Jesus got up and went like, there's this, this momentum. And he likes to say that God, we have a God in Jesus Christ. Who's always on, who's always pursuing. Like he's seeking people out. He's, He's he's a God who sees beyond. He's a God who sees deeper, right? Like we we unfortunately in the busyness of our of the world, we 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 find that we're distracted and we we miss things and we miss people, right? And it's just beautiful to know that as Jesus moves through the gospel, there's this this divine force that is constantly seeking out, constantly constantly seeing deeper, constantly seeing when what is what. He, encountering what is broken and seeing what, what is the, the wholeness that he de- desires to give people. Right. And there's countless stories that we'll get to, but I love that Jesus is, Jesus is, is, is just going for it. And he's constantly, his, his, his heart is just constantly seeking and pursuing. Amen. You got anything for the Angelus? I'm good at the moment. <laughs> good. Very happy. I'm not leaning back. I'm like forward <laughs> videos on ready to contribute as, <laughs> as say, you know, necessary really. <laughs> <laughs> no, just to piggyback off that, like even in the gospel that we're going to get into a little bit with the hemorrhaging woman, like even the motion of Jesus going across the lake and coming back across the lake and immediately things happen, you know, it's one of those things where he's constantly on the move. And um, Father Francesco, the Abba, Father Francesco of our <laughs> class, do you remember his homily? Yeah, I remember it. It's I still to this day, you know, like it's just Jesus shows up on the shore in search of us. Like, mm-hmm. and I was like, mm-hmm. wow, that's it. And even like, I think Father Cameron was like, wait, where did you get that from? Like our, our homiletics teacher was like amazed at that line. Somebody teaching homiletics for like 20 years. He's like, where did you get that from? And I just prayed about it, bro. You know, <laughs> like, totally mystical, but but it's the truth. He's though. a like, mistake. Jesus sure. comes in search of us, which is mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. And it's something that we can never tire of hearing, but just something in a reality we have to sit in and just realize, okay, he comes in search of me, you know? Amen. Why does that matter? Any, any, anybody have any thoughts? Because I do think, like when we 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 did a Lenten retreat in Phoenix, and the names of like the first three talks were uh, like a pursuing love, a pursuing mercy, and a pursuing mm, healer. Because mm. I do think that there is something about the desire to be pursued, um, which is pretty fundamental. I think we do all want to be pursued. You guys want to unpack that a little bit, Father? I just have a quick thought too. As Father PT was talking, this season, this past season in our life has been pretty busy. I think we've been a lot meeting a lot of people, young and old. I, 
I just want to propose that I think you guys probably have felt it too. There's probably a bit of a discouragement and a constant battle for a lot of people to like believe this. Mm. But in the midst of my own brokenness and messiness and maybe my own suffering or my own lukewarmness, that does God like really care? Does, is he really coming? Does he, does he really um, have grace for me? Does he really have power for me? Does he really have a moment where he <clears> can be the answer for me? It's beautiful to really sit with people. I remember just being with some, at something at a university uh, in Nebraska and uh, some focus mission is just beautiful to sit and listen and to remind people of this again. I think in the midst of work, in the midst of pressure, in the midst of the need to be on all the time and the need to be in mission, I, this can <clears throat> this truth can be refreshing for a lot of people that, well, it's not, it doesn't start with me. I don't have to, I don't have to have the perfect plan. I don't have to put it together and I don't have to, um, yeah, have all the answers, but just the simple truth that like God can, I can, I can reset. And that's, I think what we're trying to do in this part, particular season of the podcast is to reset a little bit and just kind of start at the beginning that this is God's work. It's his plan. It's his grace. It's his power in our life that it, that is kind of like setting the stage for, for everything. And I think it's beautiful as ministers when you sit there and just, I feel my own, like, man, they're really looking for an answer. Or they're really wanting some good advice. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what else to say, but like, God, it's here. And he really desires you. And he really desires like with his grace to break into your life. Sometimes there's like a, whoa, it's not that complicated, but I need to be reminded. And it's just beautiful to, to, to be in a place where you can allow people to experience that grace and truth again. And they're like, whoa, okay. I need to embrace that again. And, and, and like stand on that truth rather than like this panic or this obsession with trying to figure it out or do it. Yeah. I have a plain story that just kind of answers the question of like, like why do people need to be reminded? Because I think we forget who God is, right? And, and I, uh, I, I've told this on mission, so Father Mark, you hear this a lot, but I, I deeply believe this. I just, I was sitting on a plane with a young man who was a fallen away Catholic and who, um, yeah, I think he was kind of a new age yoga master, right? And he's, yeah, and he's, he's just in it. And he he was telling me about an experience of Christianity and leaving and and kind of, just grasping at this, this journey to God and with like a kind of a Buddhist kind of just at this experience of, of kind of, of just other religions. Right. And it, it's beautiful to sit and listen to people. Cause we're not threatened by that. We know who God is and just being, being able to say, okay, like your journey to God is, is really beautiful. And like it talking about that and, and just, just not like not being afraid to receive people in that. And it just, but he's, and he made this comment. He talked about his journey to God. And he said, well, it's beautiful because Christ, it's like Christianity, it's all the same. Like my journey to God and Christianity, it's all the same. And I was like, but hey, I was like the, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit just kind of move in my heart. Like, I was like, but hey, listen, like it's actually not, it's not the same, right? And I, I we have a res enough respect for each other. We just met, but like, we're, we're just being a real, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the God of the universe, the God of Christianity, the God of the Trinity, we actually don't believe that it's all the same and that, you know, you, you can l think about all these different journeys to, for man's search to God because the God of Christianity, the, the, the God who is his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's about his journey to us, right? It's about God becoming man in, in Jesus Christ. It's about Pentecost. It's about this gift of God, oh, the Father overflowing in our life. And it's about him becoming small and as a little child, it's about him becoming like giving, instituting the last supper and becoming present in a piece of bread, right? It's again, just for the sake of the gospel, right? Like Jesus pursuing and God becoming so close, right? I'm never tired of saying that over and over in parish missions. Like this is what we proclaim to people that God comes close mm -hmm. in our suffering, right? So I would just say, but like, bro, like, let me just tell you that we don't, that's actually, Christianity's not that. Mm -hmm. Right, it's about God pursuing us. And so telling people the truth, that's why. Because we forget that, that God in, in, in the person of Jesus and his, his own heart for us actually deeply desires to come close. And that's not that's like uniquely Christian. But I love reminding people that but Jesus, like just let yourself, just let Jesus love you. Let your Jesus come to you, right? Mm. Story after story in the gospels, it's Jesus finding us. And that's the gift of just a, the gift of Christianity. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. It's reminds me of a story. Actually, yeah. Anyway, it's at a parish mission and uh, sometimes attached to parish missions, we do school visits. Right. And I'm younger in vows and I was with a brother, uh, two of the brothers actually. 
and one of the brothers is in front of the eighth grade classroom. And uh, he says, okay, guys, I got a secret to tell you. You know, all the kids are like, okay, what's going on? And it's like hyping it up. Like, oh, no, no, I, I got a big secret to tell you. And they're like, okay, what, what? God loves you. And then, exactly, everybody's like, what? That's a secret? <laughs> you know, and then the other brother jumped in. He's like, no, everybody pretends like it's a secret, but it's not a secret. You got to go out and tell everybody. <laughs> but it's kind of funny in the sense of sometimes we live that way right? That, okay, God loves me. And that's a truth that sometimes we just don't understand or experience. And even Father Angelus, what you're talking about, like we could complicate things a lot. And it's just, it's simple. Just being aware of the presence of the Lord, that he's come and pursuing me, that this is the God who in the Eucharist I experience, or even more so in the gospel of John, it's all over the place, right? Jesus is talking about, I was sent by the father. Um, I don't know if it's Cardinal Ratzinger, but Somebody a lot smarter than us said that, right? That Jesus is the first apostle, apostle being Greek for sent. He's the first one sent, you know, from the Father for us. Mm. You know, Get you dropping Greek like that. Bro, come, on. come on. By the way, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> seriously? <laughs> wow. Anyway. Nice one, bro. Nice one. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, totally messed up my flow. Wow. Gee, I think you just controlled yourself there. You were going to make a probably a disparaging <laughs> comment, and you did not. I'm very proud of you. I, I'm about PT. Yes. Can please continue. At least one of us in this group <laughs> can be respectful. Um, but it's a it's a cheese line. I, I I think it's cheese, but it's helpful. I think it's helpful. <laughs> um, but God makes his appointments in our disappointments, right? Um, God makes his appointments in our disappointments. Cause like oftentimes we could have the this is my life plan, this is where I'm going, this is what's gonna happen. And God's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm trying to get to your heart. I'm trying to get to to you. And all these things are, are kind of in the way, like of your mm-hmm. plan, your mm-hmm. your five-year plan, your your two-year plan. And we're going to put those things to the side. And I just want to encounter you because I'm in search of you and I love you, you know? And so it's just a beautiful thing to realize that sometimes we're disappointed with the different things that we kind of have in store or what we want to happen, where God just wants us at that specific moment and being present to him is the most important thing, even though it feels like things are falling apart. It feels like all these other things are happening. But the reality and the truth is that God is present to you in that moment. And he just wants you to turn around and look at him. Mm. You know, he just mm. wants you to, mm. to acknowledge that and just say, okay, Lord, my affections and my heart are towards you at this moment, you know? So. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was it? God makes appointments and your disappointments? Mm-hmm. That's definitely cheesy, but I know. also <laughs> it was really helpful. I know. Okay. It was really helpful. And we're going to run with that. Okay. So thank you. You're welcome. I receive you in your cheesiness. People are going to love it. They're like, oh, that's all they're going to remember. Like, Seriously. By the way, that's not People me. are crying. The, the, Caitlin Reardon's crying. <laughs> <laughs> she thought that was so beautiful. We see you, Caitlin. It's all right. Yeah. Actually, I, she likes Father, Father Angelus more, but that's, go ahead. That's just perfect. She, w- this is becoming a thing where people are feel sorry for you and they just really love you. Father yeah. Angelus. Yeah, it's, it's good. You guys give me a hard time and people see that. <laughs> Actually, they listen to it. Now they're going to see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were going to say something else or you're right? No, I just, I got that offline. It's not like original thing. I just, I saw it somewhere, like one of these things. And so I just liked it. Like a poster at a high school or something? <laughs> Maybe. Um, Cause so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit on what Father Innocent said and then bounce to you. And then I'm going to, we're going to get into the gospel is like what the sentiment you're expressing about, it's not about our pursuit of God. It's about, it begins with his pursuit of us. And then our response, like that's, that's again, that's like the, the underpinning of why before we get into the book habits for holiness and like our response and all that is we have to begin here because this is what makes Christianity Christianity is it does begin with his pursuit of us. He creates us, mm-hmm. he pursues us to save us, to bring us home. And we're just like, we're, our response is trying to follow him and let him lead us back home. But it begins with that truth. Right. And so I, so 100%, um, and then, so Father PT, and, and this is, the, that was really helpful, actually, because what we're going to talk about right now is the hemorrhaging woman, right? And so this is Mark chapter five. And so just a reminder, what's going on in Mark chapter five is, um, <clears throat> is Jesus, is it, who's, who, who, is it Jairus' daughter? Jairus. Yep, Jairus. So Jairus' daughter, who's 12 years old, uh, is sick and dying, I believe, mm-hmm. not dead when he, she's dying. She's dying, right? And so Jairus comes and, and wants, and, and tells Jesus that, like what's going on. And they're on their way to Jairus' house. And along the way, uh, we we are introduced to the woman, the, the hemorrhaging woman. What's this called when there's a story inside of a story? Interpolation? Does that sound right? No. Yeah, they call it the Markin sandwich. Where? Yeah, but where they have to have like it. a fancier Look Greek word. Love it. Um, it might. No, I don't think it's interpolation. Somebody's gonna Google it and be like, yeah, it's interpolation. But Was whatever it, it is, it sounds like an inappropriate term. I'm just kidding. I'll think of it. <laughs> I'll totally. think of it right now as we're talking and I'll it. Um. So anyway, along the way, there's the story of, of the hemorrhaging woman. And my, like, I, I do love this, this story for a number of reasons, but 
when we pay attention, right, one of the, the realities we have to understand about this woman, so she's sick, right? And she's been sick for 12 years and it tells us that uh, she spent everything she had uh, like on doctor, doctors, whatever, and it, it only grew worse. And then, and so it just like, I do think like you want to take time to like, what is like the life experience of the hemorrhaging woman um, to be outcast, to be in this time, con- this, this context culture, to be unclean, right? To be outcast. And for, for 12 years, 12 years is a long time. It's a long time. 12 years is a long time to suffer both physically, but also through isolation and all that. And it's real. And I don't think, yeah, like, so we, we take a moment to just like reverence that and, and like let that sink in. And then, and then it tells us, the gospel tells us, right? Like she heard about Jesus. And, and as Jesus comes to town, as Jesus crosses the sea, right? To, to come to where she is, she goes. And it, it's just such a fascinating detail that we, we sometimes miss in the, in the gospels. Like it tells us that because so, she believed that just touching the tassel of Jesus's cloak would bring her healing. And she goes in pursuit of that. But, it, but the gospel tells us she comes from behind. So she comes from behind, she touches the tassel, she feels healed, and then she immediately goes back into being part of the crowd. She immediately goes back into isolation, right? And um, and so I think like what this first is telling us is like, uh, I'm just, I'm convinced that this woman had just had given up hope that good news can be written on a human face. That she just, the way people looked at her and 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 sort of either the the disgust or the embarrassment or the anger or or whatever like people's faces revealed to her um, became how she 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 looked upon herself and she had just given up hope. She just mm. given up hope, right? That that there would be a that a, 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 another set of eyes would look at her with love and respect and reverence and all of that and reveal the truth about who she is. And so she she comes up from behind and she touches the tassels of Jesus, um, and she's healed. And and it says like she knows she's healed, but she immediately kind of hides again. She immediately goes back into hiding. Um, and, and, it, and it tells us, right? So Jesus, again, Jesus is on the way to visit the the home of this 12-year-old girl who's dying, right? And like, it's a big deal. That's a big deal. And in the midst of this crowd, the gospel, again, it says <clears> that the crowd like thronged about him. So there's all these people touching him. He, he stops like, who touched me? Right? And, and the disciples look at him and he's like, what, like, are you, like, what are you talking about, Jesus? Like, there's a ton of people touching you. It's like, who touched me? And, and it says, right, the gospel says that the woman, knowing what happened, co- comes and falls at the feet of Jesus with fear and trembling. It's like she begins to cry. Mm-hmm. And she begins to offer this apology. And then in my own meditation on it, I just see like her, her, her like crying at the feet of Jesus and then Jesus stooping down right in the midst of this crowd. And, and as she slowly like lifts her eyes and looks at his eyes, like, like he, she, she receives like again in his eyes and in the, in the gaze of Jesus, like you're loved, you're wanted, you're pursued, uh, you're mine. And all of this, right? He's the first words that come out of Jesus' lips, like, like daughter, right? Mm-hmm. And then he says, like, daughter, your faith is, I think it's daughter, your faith has healed you. Now you can go in peace. Yep. Right? Um, <clears throat> but like, it, it's, it's, it's the healing she needed wasn't just the healing of having the, the, the sickness stop, but it was the healing of knowing that she's pursued by God, that she's wanted, that like she, she can come, like, she can come out of hiding, right? She can come out of hiding and be received with like love. Mm-hmm. And and knowing her identity as daughter and all that and like that's that's where we want to begin, right? Just just that moment of being found and pursued by the Lord and looking into His face and 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 realizing like and finding rest in, in that mm-hmm. loving face. I think. Um, yeah, bro. I just love. I just love how you say that because it's not just about healing. Jesus is not just like some sort of kind of master healer. He does that, but it's like always for the sake of this 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 restoration of our identity. And I, and I, and you guys know I'm a big identity guy. I, I teach that and, and hopefully we live that for the postulants, but like, like Jesus wants to restore the relationship. He wants to restore the gift of, of who we are in this, in the intimacy of being daughter and son, right? Like, I love how that, the, the, the truth that comes from his mouth, right? It's the truth that heals, right? She, she is healed physically, but to hear the son of God call you daughter. Right, like think think of what that did for her heart, like it's a restoration in 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 the gift of who she is in the eyes of God, right? No one would probably have ever said that in in context, right? She probably had been rejected by her family, and like you said, what that means for her in that in that really dark place. But I I just I just love that, and that's a that's like a huge moment where Jesus looks upon her and restores her identity. He restores relationship, like. 
And I, I mean, I, that can't, that just can't be taken lightly because probably for the rest of her life, she remembered the way he said daughter. And she finally has a place in the world because daughter is, it gives you just this concrete relationship that now I, I know why I'm alive because I'm a son or excuse me, I'm a daughter of God, sons and daughters of God, right? Like the restoration of the identity is, that's what Jesus's heart longs for. And the healing is always a mechanism for that. The, the breaking in is always because he wants to say again, like, I see you, I love you and you are mine. You're my daughter, you're my son. And, and I think that's just like, I think that's the, just the divine power and the divine love just flowing through Jesus. I'm going to jump back because I also think there's this question is this, is, um, is I really, I really believe that after that encounter with, with the Lord, her understanding of her 12 years of suffering and that sickness was totally transformed. Mm. Right. Um, cause, and it's, again, it's like how during that 12 years, how, how many times was she asking the question, why? How many times was she asked, was she crying out to God? Like, where are you? And there came this moment like where it was, it was really in her poverty and, and because of her sickness that like when Jesus comes, she goes, she dares to go and she, she, it's like, she, you know, she almost has nowhere else to go. Right. And so she runs to Jesus and, and that, and, and then she has that experience of looking upon the Lord and receiving her identity, like in the face of the Lord. And, and that probably doesn't happen if she doesn't have the, that sickness, like the, the mm-hmm. right. And I just see now, like, Everything in her life, like just that, all of that just takes on a different, different um, tone in her memory because of what it led to. And I'm going to just, I'm going to share a quick story. Mm-hmm. Is that cool? Do it. I think we have, this is like, this is the whole thing. This is, I'm sorry about touching you, bro. Don't touch me, please. <laughs> um, please. <laughs> um, this is the whole, this is the thing about, um, what was it? The disappointment in your appointment? No, oh appointment. Seriously. Take a, take a. Jewel and just throw it to the pigs. No, uh, God makes his appointments in your disappointments. Just him saying it, just like, it's, it's powerful, bro. Beautiful. <laughs> it's not beautiful. It's, it's not. super cheesy, <laughs> but it might be true. Um, might. Yeah, it is. It, it's just the point. What, whatever. Um, Go ahead, I mean, tell, it is true. I know what you're trying to say, bro. Tell relax. Story, man. Tell your relax. story. <laughs> um, I do think this is like the story of our lives. You know, this is just a lot of what we do, especially with probably in our, in our own lives, but also the people we work with is like, you just see people come to us, they come to our door, they come to the shelter in, in, in disappointment often. And we see the grace of God respond and meet them there and transform their lives and, and offer them something new. And I think of, we had, we had one, one young man who I'd visit in Honduras to bring communion to. And there, and right. There's a number of people in the area who were, when I was there, who were in their teens, late teens, early twenties, who were gunshot victims. Mm. And so they were paralyzed. And so they're homebound and we'd bring communion to him. And one of the guys, I remember just talking to him and having him share his story. And when he was like, whatever it was, was 17, 18, he just was randomly shot and he, and, and he's left paralyzed. And he shares the story of, of all like the struggle of um, kind of, yeah, just there, there's, there's the pain, but then there's also like that ongoing, like there's kind of a death, like an ongoing death of like hopes and dreams, like just I'm never going to play soccer again and whatever this kind of stuff, right. That come up, that come up and, 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 and having to grieve those. And, but, but at this time as well, like as, as this is all happening and it just was like a mess with like bed sores and it was just, it was just terrible. But the, but the brothers would go visit him at some point every day. Uh, one of our, one of our brothers was a nurse and would go and help to clean the bed sores. So they didn't get infected. And uh, people from the church were going to visit him and we're, we're bringing him communion and we're praying with him every day. And it was, it was through this experience that he really came to know the Lord, right? And it was through this experience that he came to, to love Jesus above all else. And it was, it was fascinating to hear him tell this story because um, I was like, I was listening to it and it was like tragic, right? And, and, but, but at a point he's like, there's like a hope to it and like an optimism. And, and you could tell like he's looking on the memory, not with like seeing it, the struggle in his life journey. Like there was like, I was like, you almost are talking about this like blessing. And I asked him that question. And it's like, like, if you, like, if this, like, if you could make this not happen or if it never happened, like, would you do that? And his answer was super profound. And, and he said, you know, like, brother, like, when I used to have my legs, when I used to have my legs and I could walk, I, I, would, I, would, I could walk and I could run, but I, but I wasn't walking with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. And so he said, like, if I could have my legs back, 
but it meant I'd no longer be walking with Jesus. Well, it's better that I am like, mm. I'm, I'm paralyzed. Mm. And it was just, it was just me and him talking. Like it wasn't for show. It was just like really what he believed. And, and I think that there's something so beautiful about like the overwhelming gift of being found by the Lord, the overwhelming gift of experiencing and being pursued by him. That is a gift. Like in this young man's life, it's like, if, if it means that I, I can't walk the rest of my life and all that stuff, okay, this, cause this is better. This is better. And, and that's like, you don't make that up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I just think that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful necessary reminder. That's real. It's just real faith. I think for a lot of people too, they, they're waiting for God to come to them. Like I'm going to have a moment. I'm going to have a retreat. I'm going to have, you know, kind of this big time experience. And I think, I think to your point, Father PT too, and this kid recognize it, but it's the things that maybe are outside of my control. It's the things, little things, little challenges, little difficulties, little opportunities to, to respond. And, and if we can live in this kind of disposition of desperation, ultimately of mm. desiring God, needing God, and sometimes our own poverty, obviously most of the time our own poverty reveals that to us, that it's like, whoa, I don't have to like wait for some big thing to happen or some big event to happen, but actually like in these little moments where I can say yes and open up, like God comes. Um, I think that's a shift in mentality and a shift in posture of living that is game changing because it, it becomes this, God breaks in, it can break in in, in every moment if I give it to him rather than these, these like somehow he's far away and he just comes in the big things. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we recognize whether, I mean, obviously significant moments where I'm hurt or injured or um, and you have your own story of that, but small graces, small, small opportunities to see God come and to see him break in. Like if we can be more open to that, like that's the like grace filled opportunities to experience God in, in like a very consistent, beautiful, his like relentless pursuit of me mm-hmm. throughout the day. And, and mostly it's small things or, or common things or ordinary things, but things that can sanctify my day and, and change my heart. But I think some of, I mean, it's difficulty because, difficult because sometimes we're just waiting for something else or waiting for something big, um, but it, it can be small, you know? Yeah. And just even how, right, Jesus, he turns around and he looks for her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he just turns around. He could have kept going, cool. I know that power left me whatever, but he turns around in pursuit of her. And even just thinking about that, it's something where, right, the cross and and, and the uh, the tomb are not too far apart from each other, right? Where the resurrection happens and also where the crucifixion happens. I was struck by this when we we're in the Holy Land, where right, right there, there, you mm-hmm. know, like right there is the crucifixion and like 50 to 100 feet away is the place of the tomb. It's like, okay, it's beautiful, where the cross and, and the resurrection are never too far from each other. And so oftentimes it feels like, okay, this crucifixion is happening. There's no hope. There's no end but don't forget that 10 feet away or hundred feet away is the resurrection. And once again, it just takes the posture of Jesus on the cross as we spoke about before, of like, yeah. you know, Father, you know, um, you're with me in this. Mm. And it's something that once again, it's just a helpful reminder that we just constantly have to be looking towards him to turn around, turn our approach and just to invite him into the situation. So that way it's real, you know, it's, mm. it's a real thing of us being his daughters, his sons, um, those who he loves and he comes in pursuit of, you know? Can I throw a question out there or just a word out there that I sh- it's probably be good to address? Please. Shame. Feel free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I just think, it, I'm thinking about this. This That's is like, dramatic. this is good news. Right. Um, but I think shame is a real thing. And shame uh, builds this kind of like defense in us that we, we somehow, because of our struggles, because of our sins, because of our weaknesses, yeah. somehow begin to believe um, that, we're not sons and daughters and somehow, or I'm far away from being sons and daughters and I'm, I'm confused and it's reiterated in my, in my inabilities or reiterated in my weakness. And so I did, I think I just have a lot of experience of like, people don't know what to do with their shame. Right. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just I, like to be that. Yeah. I, I think there's a simple definition that I use often in like confession and things is that guilt means if you have guilt, you, it, it means that you've done something bad. There's an action that kind of, there's a consequence of feeling a certain way. That's actually good. There's like, I have a guilty conscience because I did something where that my, my conscience is like, whoa, that's off. Like that's not of the Lord or that's, it's not, there's something that's like a violence to our humanity. So that's a good thing. But shame is actually the lie that I did something then. So I'm bad, right? So like, it's, it's not that I did something bad, but now that because of that, or because of this experience of life, now that I'm bad, right? 
So it's an, it's an attack against the identity. It's attack against the relationship that we actually begin to believe that we are bad or we're disconnected because of a particular circumstance. So this we young, take it on, right? And we, we take and we it walk. on and you begin to believe it becomes, it, 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 the lies seep in that I'm bad and I don't have a place in the world that what I did was I'm a sinner or I'm dirty <clears throat> or I'm unclean, right? And so I think that's, that's right. Like I, I experienced this in, in formation with the guys I experience, like, especially when we're, we're, we're talking about our identity and who are we and receiving that from the father. Some, sometimes we really believe lies about ourselves that we somehow we were stuck and that we're wounded and there's an infection in our hearts. And we begin to believe that somehow that I'm, I'm bad or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm far away from God. And then you ask people who told you that? Right. Like people are like, well, like, you know, and they start saying the list of things that got them in this place. And, and I think that's, what's beautiful is just like daughter, son, you know, like it just, sometimes you have to, you have to, to attack and let the grace attack the shame. And that's why I love the presence of Jesus that just, that is becomes this force, um, just breaking open the shame that no, like this is, that's a lie. I see you and I see, like, I see beyond or deeper than, than the weakness or the darkness here. So I think, that, I think that's a real thing for people. They carry that around. Um, no matter what the disappointment, just to use the image, what the disappointment is in their life, they, they, some, most times people struggle to believe the truth about themselves. Yeah. And it's beautiful, right? Who's, who told you that? Whose voice is speaking to you yeah. at this moment? You know, like when you feel that shame, you feel like, okay, I am not good at these things or because of these sins, I am this person. Um, the truth is God says something about you and the evil one says something else about you. The evil one's constantly whispering lies to kind of get you down this road of, of shame and I can't get out of this struggle when God is always calling you son or daughter, come back home, you know, or just saying these wonderful things about us. And who do we choose to listen to? You know, and, and we're falling into that path. It's something to take, take a moment, take a deep breath, and ask that question, okay, whose voice is this? It's whose a, voice is this? It's you know? a worthy question, bro. Yeah. Can you share the let yourself be found story? And then yeah. I'll, I'm going to come back to it from what, what we've just talked about. Yeah. This is a story I picked up from a priest at IPF, and it's it's a simple story, but I use it a lot <laughs> to talk about that, that posture of, of letting ourselves be found. Um, this is just about this priest that just this faithful priest who actually is blind. And he, he had a pretty he had a pretty consistent day, pretty, um, like you're in a rhythm and he, you know, like he goes out for his daily walk and he, and he's, he's, I think he's well known. So people are used to seeing father out on his walk. And in one particular day he got disoriented and he, again, I don't know the specifics, but for a variety of different reasons, he, he was out on his walk and there was traffic and a lot of these different things. And he just got disoriented. He didn't know where he was. Right. And he actually found himself in, in the middle of the street and it became dangerous. And, and it being a peripheral guy, like he was like, all right, Lord, like, I'm like, I'm so lost right now. Like, you know, what do I do? And he just felt the Lord say in his heart, sit down. And the, I mean, the kind of the funny thing is like, I mean, I, I'm in the middle of the road, <laughs> excuse me. Like, can you, can you come, come again? You know, like, you know, and he just felt the Lord sit down. Right. And so being just like trying to be obedient, he sat down and he was like in the, like in the middle of the street. Right. And, and again, just like there's, there's, a, there's a confidence and a boldness here because he heard the cars and, he, and it was just dangerous, right? And so he hears this car coming up and he, he you know, this, this lady stops and gets out and, he, and she makes just a good assumption that, that something's wrong. Like, okay, fa hey, Father, like I know, like, can I help you? <laughs> like, you know, like, like in the street, right? And he's like, Father, he's like, I'm lost. And like, can you just take me back home? Like, you know, and so he got in the car the told, told her, told the lady where he lived. And so he's walking through and he's trying to like process this experience. And it's a simple thing, but he like, what happened? Right. Like he walks through the door and again, as he's praying and he's like, he's just processing this with the Lord. He just feels the Lord say like, I, I, I had to, I asked you to sit down to let yourself be found. Like that's the, what the Lord spoke in his heart. I, I asked you to sit down to let yourself be found. Right. Brothers like, the more we try to fix our own lives, the more we try to take control, the more we try to understand things. That's a big thing. Like, oh, if I just understand why this happened or like the more we try in our lives to have control physically or emotionally, psychologically, the more things just don't make sense, right? We remain kind of wandering. But what's beautiful about this word is, is just, just, just sit down. Like you don't have to do it anymore. It's pretty clear you're lost. 
Like this, this is just not going to go well. <laughs> so just, just sit down and just let yourself be found. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty, pretty continual thing that happens in my own prayer. <laughs> Jesus is like, just, just sit down. Like this is just it's, it's right. chill, <laughs> just chill out. Chill. But also, I love, I love, I love proclaiming that to people. Like wherever you're at right now, just sit down, right? And I think that's a part of you. It's all over the gospel. People come to a place where they're just like, okay, like I can't do this anymore. And I'm tired of trying, I'm exhausted. It's been six years. Or I think of the, the, the man at the pool of Siloam, wasn't it like 38 years? 38 years. And he finally gets to a place where he's just like, okay, like I can't. And then Jesus finds him, Jesus comes to him. Mm-hmm. It's just a good shepherd. It's mm-hmm. like, Jesus is finding people, you know, but just to sit down. Why are you looking at me like that? It's just a good shepherd. Jesus <laughs> like, well, like, get all excited people, talking people about are, shepherd. People are t- tired of me talking about the good shepherd. It's real, right? You know what I mean, Ange? I got you. <laughs> I think I'm all about the good shepherd. I'm, I'm going to be on a good shepherd journey. Mm. I'm all about the pursuit of mm, it's Jesus, real. but I don't usually look at it in good shepherd language. Maybe I should. Um, but this is like why, why I wanted to share that again is lean up. Is, is, is again, the, the, what we're trying to say is that like God is always pursuing you, right? And God's always speaking to you. And there's a lot of other voices trying to like speak as well. But, and a lot of ways we're like trying to run, like God's trying to speak to you. He's trying to pursue, he's trying to care for you. And it's like, sit down, like let yourself be found. Um, listen, wait, trust, you know, all, all of that. Like that's, that's the response. And that's why I do think it's like important. Like we begin with God and, and who God is and who, and, and his action towards us. And that's going to help to clarify our response. And our response, number one, is like, sit down, right? You know? Um, so, and, and what does that sit, sitting down look like? It's that disposition of receptivity. It is, um, it's surrender. It's prayer, like 100%. Like, um, it's, it's stop, like, stop running from other distractions or fleeting pleasures, whatever. Like, sit down and, and let me care for you. And let me look at you. Yeah. Mm. Right. And let me remind you of who I am and who you are. And then, and then we can talk about the next step. Right. Yeah. I don't got anything. Good. I, I'm just feeling that. I yeah. think that's where this is beautiful before we dive into this book. Like I, that's it. That's like, I think it all we'd ever want to say to people at the kind of the beginning of this journey mm-hmm. is like, this is so real that Jesus is here and you don't have to, you don't have to like, try to do this and work this out by yourself anymore. Like just sit down. He's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and maybe just in, in conclusion. Um, yeah. Maybe not. I was just thinking, I was, there's a lot of good things. Like I just, your, your line for the PT again, just about like the, the cross, the, whatever the tomb and Golgotha and the tomb are like not far away. Right. And it feel, I mean, it certainly can feel like that. You know, I mean, like we're talking about the woman in the gospels for, for 12 years. Like that's. It's a long time. Yeah. You know, it, but when we let it, I think we do let it unfold. And in the, the context of eternity, I think we'll look back and be like, okay, maybe it wasn't as far apart as, as I thought. I'm grateful for the gift of the, obviously for the gift of the resurrection. But it's beautiful. Like the, the gift of the resurrected Jesus is this like proclamation of peace. And so like, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that everything's perfect and it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that everything's taken away, but mm-hmm. it means that somehow I'm able to let this truth penetrate me. Right. That in the midst of my madness, in the midst of my craziness or in the midst of my stuff, that God breaks in and God pursues mm-hmm. me. And so therefore the risen Jesus like breaks into their fear. He breaks into their isolation. He breaks into their worry about what's gonna happen. He's like, peace be with you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here and my power is here and my presence is here. So the risen Jesus just it starts to, pursue everybody, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's beautiful, like peace. Like, what do we mean by that? We don't mean that everything's great, yeah. but we, we mean that now I live a, according to a different truth. Right. And, the, and the challenge, I think, Father Mark, your point too, the challenge is this daily experience of how do I live in that truth? How do I choose that truth? How do I experience that truth? Do I have space in my life to let that truth like wash over me? Uh, I was talking to one of the postulants recently, like every time we go to pray, we got to begin with this truth. Like we can go jump into prayer and be like, dive into something else. And all of a sudden we're like wandering interiorly. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden it's like, bro, you got to go back and let that truth anchor you in every experience of your prayer. Right. I am, God is my father. I am his son. 
he sustains me. He breathes life into me. He sees me right now. He, you know, but sometimes we just kind of get in it, but over and over again, this truth of, of his pursuit and this truth of what he wants to do, how he sees me, what, how he, how he wants to work in my life. Like we have to start there. I think ch the challenge is, is that we can jump in and all of a sudden we start to start to wonder, you know, like, oh man, we need to root ourselves. In that. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, sometimes like, am I talking to Jesus or um, am I telling all my problems or like, am I actually having a conversation with him? Like real prayer, you know, cause it could just be like a laundry list of Jesus, you got to fix this, this, that, and that. Cause that's, you know, it's screwed up, but maybe he wants that to happen in a way so that way you could come to a deeper experience, his providence, his care, his love and his peace. And be saved. Right, right. Right. Exactly. Because if these things were taken away from you immediately, then maybe it's not that depth that this woman felt of, okay, daughter and restored, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, so just to piggyback off that. Yeah, yeah. You're the pardon and peace guy, right? Absolutely. That's what you give talks on that, I think. Yeah, just the, the gift of it. I actually started in, um, in when I give that now, it's just like to pause, like the middle or give you pardon and peace and kind of let that wash mm. over, you know? And Funny, I do that too. You. <laughs> but it's beautiful, like the, the gift of like, and actually praying as a priest, like what I mm. mean by that. Like, and really praying, um, like it's not just words, but it's a power that comes with the words. And like, is there power coming forth in mm -hmm. this prayer? Like the Lord bringing pardon and peace. Like that's real. Cause I think like part of what the, the sacrament, like it's not just there. To, so you like the sacrament's not just so you don't go to hell. No. You know what I mean? Like that it's not just to, it's not just to, to make the bad go away or to, yeah. But but it's to it's to remind you again. This it's to remind you of who you are, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a pardon and peace. It's like like we bring our we bring our guilt, we bring the shame. But like the Lord wants to speak into the, okay. This does not define you. Like your son, your daughter. You I I came to save you, and and when I'm giving you absolution, I want to restore my life mm -hmm. uh, within you as well. But I also want you to have pardon and peace that like we're like I still love you. Like that's not you know it's like that's your thing, right? Like look, so hey, look at me, bro. No, just don't look at me, bro. <laughs> But that's your thing, right? About like, um, like you would ask your penitent sometimes, like, okay, so does, does God love you more before yeah, or after totally. absolution? I'm just like, and that's that's a lie we believe. Like, so after this, is God going to love you more than He did before? And you it, people like, like deliberate, deliberate, like, hmm, you know, I think maybe after, like, they they have a misunderstanding of like God's love for them, unconditional right. love for them. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I love to say sacrament of penance is not about just forgiveness. You bet, it's about forgiveness, but it's a sacrament of healing. Like the healing power of Jesus wants to look at you and and absolutely just break into your life right now to heal the depths of who you are, right? It's yeah, you're forgiven. Yeah, you got that. But there's healing. He wants mm -hmm. to. Don't like you don't exactly like you just we don't roll our eyes that you're forgiven. That was bro, a little. Bro, 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 bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just spiked the mic. I do not absolutely. <laughs> I mean, but that is a big deal as well. I mean, I mean, forgiveness is a very big deal. But sometimes reduce it just to that. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, I totally did not mean to roll my eyes because forgiveness is, is an div <laughs> divine of God's divine love, right? But like, it's not just that. Totally. Seriously, they didn't probably see that. You just called me out. We got cameras. <laughs> They see stuff now. I didn't. I wasn't rolling my eyes at forgiveness. I was just saying there's no, so much it more. A, it was a visible roll. <laughs> I saw it. It was just so much more. I just want you to have pardon and peace. But you got pause. I, I sure pardon and peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds like it's time to wrap it up. Fair I enough. Like, any any I closing feel thoughts about that? It's, so, this is pretty foundational, and this is like it's not. We don't need you. It's not, not much more to say mm -hmm. like than setting a foundation for the disciples, like a life as the disciples, but also like a real Franciscan simplicity, like this is what it's all about. Like the mm -hmm. heart of it right here is that God pursues me and then everything can flow from mm -hmm. that, which is great. Mm -hmm. and this is what mother would say, Mother Teresa would say to the sisters, right? Like you gotta, you gotta begin with knowing that like, like that Jesus thirsts for you. It's like not, and that's what she would, she would say. Like, he doesn't just like love you. Like he thirsts for you. He has like this passionate desire for you. And like, that's where, that's where we begin. Mm -hmm. That's the starting point is experiencing that, that pursuing love. Um, unto thirst for us cool great cool. absolutely cool Puppy, um, do you did great thanks thanks guys thanks appreciate for coming that. and making time thanks for inviting me you you keep getting better and better father pt i appreciate that yeah that's that's a tough compliment to get you got yeah, yeah. you keep getting better so so i wasn't good before bro, huh? bro you are improving <laughs> so much i appreciate that do I really you don't. reject satan i do <laughs> in all his works i do 
in all his empty promises. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Christian on our fo- our hands, folks. Whew, um, Can you read this up? I, I gotta. Yeah. You gotta go to the potty. A little potty <laughs> break. A little potty break. Potty incident. You're getting old, bro. It's all right. Um, Thirty six. I feel like we have, we're all, we're, you're just a little guy. We all have April birthdays. Mm. Happy birthday to us. You know what would make a great birthday present? A donation to support <laughs> the podcast. Look at you. <laughs> hey, so we're, we're grateful. We're, we're grateful, grateful for everybody who has made a d- donation. That's awesome. And we are this very is, grateful. We can't do this without you guys. So we are just deeply grateful for everyone's help. Thank you. I would like to also celebrate that I'm not tired right now. Oh wow! I'm, you, I'm always tired mm-hmm. when we're recording, and right now. So I'm is not this tired. what your face looks like, like all the time? <laughs> <laughs> this was you did. Was that did that kind of did that go over the? Vicky is not going to like that <laughs> comment. Vicky's our boss. Vicky says, "Father innocence too mean sometimes." Just father innocent. The rest of us are very nice. <laughs> that is a lie. I'm very nice. I feel like we have to say hi to some friends real quick. We just got back from Nebraska. Yeah, totally. We can. The oh, lits. I mean, Aaron, the lits don't listen anymore. They don't? No, Aaron doesn't listen. No. Oh. Why are we saying hi? We say hi to the Havlitz, <laughs> the Reardon's. We say hi to Mrs. Wal- Miss Walsh, who's a who's a teacher at Cathedral. She loves this. Who, the Canes. The Canes. Team Nebraska, Vocus listens. It was totally. great, great to be with them. I feel like there was um, the Havlitz. Who are the Havlitz? My sister. Your, your, your sister... The, the single mom with the six kids. <laughs> and we should say hello to her husband, Brian. Yeah, we Brian. love He's a great dad. Who is the dad of her six kids? I just asked you, I set you up and you said, Oh, my sister. Like, mm-hmm. You still forget Brian. Brian, well, we're not going to forget about you. Brian, we, if, if we could replace these two with you, <laughs> just want to let you know that. Brian is Katie's husband, faithful husband, with faithful husband. father of six. Yep. Rocking it. All right. Um, you want to close this? Oh, habits for holiness. Throw, show up the show the book. Habits Got for it. holiness. Ascensionpress dot com backslash holiness. Zoom in. Can you zoom in to particularly in Father Mark Mary's face right here? <laughs> His Photoshop face. Did I already mention that in the, this you episode, did, bro? Yeah, I did not did. know you had a Photoshop face. It does look kind of powdery. And you're good. working on your smile, bro. I'm looking forward to reading it, bro. I'm being nice here. I just Thank want you. To know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, there's a lot Father of PT. there's a lot of jokes you can go down a Photoshop face with. I'm so, so, so strong. I'm so grateful for you, Father PT, <laughs> and your support and encouragement. I'm excited to read it. I'm excited for you to read it. <laughs> Me and to, too. To, to, to get after. We're going to dive in. Yeah. On this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you close us with a prayer? I'd be happy to close us with a prayer. Please do. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Father, thank you for pursuing us in the person of Jesus, your Son. Open our hearts more and more to Him and His love for us. Encourage us and give us confidence to stay in this truth. Pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. And with the Father and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who else did we stay with? Kaperskis? Kaperskis. Who yeah. else did brothers stay with? Minors? The minors. Do we just end the episode? No. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Now we're... Sorry. <laughs> we love everybody. <laughs> we love everybody. All right. We'll see you again next week. Little by little, everybody. Poco a poco. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know all.